Warren Buffett and his deputy Greg Abel last week made a rare international trip to Japan. It marks 12 years since Buffett was last in the country, and he made a number of visits to several investee companies, most notably the five Japanese trading companies, uh, which he bought 5% of in the public markets back in 2020. As part of the trip, Buffett and Greg Abel sat down for a close to three hour interview with CNBC's Becky Quick in Tokyo to cover an enormous range of topics, everything from why they were in Japan in the first place, uh, why they had made investments in Japan, and their thoughts on Japan as uh, an investment option moving forward, uh, as well as the general economy, thoughts on banking, cryptocurrencies, chat, GPT, and a whole lot more. So in this video, I want to take a look at some of the things that Buffett said about the Japanese investments in that interview with Becky Quick. We'll also dive into some of the reasons why he's actually recently pushed his ownership percentage in those five Japanese trading companies from 5% in 2020 up to 7.4% very recently and we'll also look at some of the returns he's enjoyed from that basket of companies so far. If you enjoyed today's video and haven't subscribed to the Investing with Tom channel already please be sure to do so but with all that said let's get straight into the video. Now the initial 5% stake that Buffett took in these Japanese trading companies is something I covered actually back on the channel here in 2020 and uh, in some ways it was a slightly unusual investment for Buffett. Buffett typically prefers US domiciled companies, he's not often one to make basket bets in companies, he tends to uh, want to concentrate his bets on specific individual companies, although he has made basket bets before, most notably in the airlines in 2008 or 2019 uh, that one didn't work out so well because we had a pandemic and he uh, sold the airlines kind of as that was kicking off uh, and he also has pretty publicly regretted not making a basket bet on pharmaceuticals back in the late 1990s but in other ways the Japan investments demonstrated the uh, capital allocation powerhouse that Buffett continues to be uh, they are broadly diversified businesses kind of similar to Berkshire in some ways he mentioned that in the interview with CNBC see they are exposed and will kind of grow with the Japanese economy more generally and uh, he stated in the interview with Becky Quick that he felt the companies were absurdly cheap especially uh, relative to prevailing interest rates at the time and like I say ever the master of capital allocation Buffer was actually able to fund the purchases with uh, Japanese yen denominated bonds uh, he issued uh, about 430 billion yen or about 3.2 billion US dollars uh, in yen denominated bonds at interest rates close to zero uh, to buy this basket of stocks where the dividend yield alone was in the range of 5-6% to 6 at the time in 2020. So Buffett bought about 5% of each of these companies uh, back in 2020. I'll put the names of those businesses up on the screen here. And uh, let's take a look at kind of how they've worked out so far. Now, firstly, let's just look at the stock price performance uh, from around September 2020 through to today. Uh, that's about the time where Buffett had completed that 5% purchase was in August or September of 2020. And as you'll see, the stocks have performed extremely well. The worst performer of the basket of five is up 65% in that period of time and the best performer in the basket is up over 200%. We know that Buffett funded this with a bunch of yen denominated bonds issued at very low uh, coupons or interest rates and he's very likely covering those uh, coupon payments on the bonds with some of the dividends that he's getting out of this basket of companies. Now uh, the dividend yield at the time as I'll put up on the screen here was in the range of 5-6% to 6 for most of these companies uh, in late 2020. Uh, the price has gone up so the dividend yield you would think would, would come down um, but the dividend you know in absolute terms has actually grown about 70 percent across that basket of companies so uh, he's borrowed money at close to zero he's invested it in companies where the stock price has gone up a lot and the dividend yield has gone up a lot so it's worked out extremely well so far if borrowing basically free money and investing it in a basket of stocks that go up 60 to 200 percent isn't a way to create equity for Berkshire shareholders out of thin air uh, I don't really know what is now with some of those thoughts out of the way Let's go straight to the man himself and hear what Warren Buffett had to say uh, in the CNBC interview with Becky Quick on these Japanese investments. Uh, he mentions a few different key points that I've kind of touched on already in the video throughout the interview with CNBC. Uh, so let's play a short clip here with some of the highlights that I've sort of stitched together from Buffett. As he often does, he characteristically sums the investment up um, very succinctly. 
I was uh, looking at company after company, as I do every day, and uh, I just thought these were big companies. They were companies that I generally understood what they did. Some was similar to Berkshire and that they owned lots of different interests, and they were selling at what I thought was very, a ridiculous price, uh, particularly the price compared to the interest rates prevailing at that time. And over that time, we've sold periodically yen-denominated bonds. So more or less, not, we don't do it precisely, but we've insulated ourselves from, from exchange rate changes. So it's worked out very well so far, but we'll be in these stocks 10, 20 years. I mean, we, 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 we weren't buying the idea they go next week, next month, next year. I was confounded by the fact that we could buy into these companies and in effect have an earnings yield of maybe 14% or something like that with dividends that would grow. They actually grew 70% during that time. And, uh, and the people were investing their money at a quarter of a percent or nothing. And, uh, and that quarter percent, if they put it out for many years, wasn't going to grow. And the 14 percent was more likely to grow than not. And uh, if that didn't look like something sensible to me, I, I, you know, I, I, that's as easy as it gets. But it's turned out to be better than I thought it would be. Well, I'm not sure I can add too much more to what Buffett said there. Uh, he clearly felt that it was a no brainer to borrow money at basically a quarter percent per year with the yen denominated bonds that Berkshire issued to buy an instrument or a basket of stocks that had an earnings yield of about 14 uh, percent that quarter percent coupon on the bonds would stay flat forever or at least until the bonds came due and the 14 percent earnings yield on the companies he felt would have a pretty good chance of growing over time so where to from here for buffett and birch hathaway and these japanese investments well there's kind of three main things i picked up out of the interview that have changed uh, significantly since the first investment was made in 2020. Now, uh, firstly, Buffett told us that their stake in these businesses has grown from 5% across the basket initially to 7.4%. So uh, even though the stocks have risen fairly substantially in a lot of cases, uh, he still clearly views these companies as an attractive place to put some of Berkshire's capital. Along similar lines, even since that recent interview with CNBC, Berkshire have issued even more yen denominated bonds they issued 164.4 uh, billion yen that's about 1.2 billion us dollars of uh, obviously yen denominated bonds at an interest rate of 1.135 percent now that is clearly still a very low interest rate but it's much higher than the uh, coupons they had on their initial bond uh, issues back in 2020 uh, their previous bond offers had uh, at the absolute lowest an interest rate of 0.17 percent but despite higher stock prices and more expensive money to fund the purchases from this bond issue that Berkshire are doing they clearly still like that spread it was absurdly extreme where you had a uh, quarter percent interest rates on bonds, 14% earnings yield on the companies. The cost of servicing the debt on the bond side has come up and the earnings yield has likely come down a little bit as well as stock prices have gone up. But uh, Buffett and Berkshire clearly still like the differential between those two. And third and final, not too much detail was given on this, but Greg Abel specifically did allude to potential future deals uh, between Berkshire Hathaway and these Japanese trading companies. Now, up until this point, uh, Berkshire have simply just bought stock in the open market. They've accumulated their initial stake of 5%, which has since grown to 7.4%, and they intend to hold that for a long time. Uh, and Greg Abel basically said that they really like the core investment, but if there's other opportunities that come up um, you know Berkshire would be more than willing to take a look at it you know they will give an answer very quickly around whether they're interested or not uh, and as Buffett put it they will never run out of money each time we've met with them we said we very much like the core investment but to the extent they can identify an incremental opportunity that we could do with any of the five companies we would uh, very much evaluate it quickly and Warren highlighted the bigger the better and that uh, he'll answer the phone on the first ring. And we'll never run out of money. So into his 90s now, Warren Buffett continues to have exceptional results in his investments and his capital allocation decisions. And these five Japanese trading companies, so far at least, are no exception.
And let me know in the comments below whether some of these companies are interesting to you and whether you might be digging into either these five Japanese trading companies or other Japanese businesses. Uh, that's really it for me for this video. If you did enjoy it and haven't subscribed to the channel already, please be sure to do so. But like I say, that's it, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.